All of us at the Dub Network and Harps Court would like to thank the crew at Herman Marshall Whiskey for being such a tremendous partner. Herman Marshall is known for their handcrafted, award-winning small batch whiskey. Whether it is their Texas bourbon, Texas rye, Texas single malt, or their blended bourbon whiskey, all of their whiskeys are built from the grain up, just like good whiskey should be. Welcome to Harps Court. I'm your host, Derek Harper. My co-host, Mark Aguirre, is probably stuck in Chicago somewhere in the cold, so we'll move on. But I'm privileged to have a very special guest, an old friend, and an old teammate, Mr. John Starks, better known as Pinky. How you doing, John? <laughs> What's up, Mark? You doing okay? I'm doing great, my man. Okay. You know, unless you've been on a rock somewhere, Brittany Griner made the news again today. Everybody knows her story. But I want to get your thoughts, John, on her being released from a Russian prison after being there since last February. Give me your thoughts on that to start off. Oh, man, that was a a devastating, uh, obviously, event um, and tragic for her, obviously, getting locked up over there in Russia and to be able to have to go through something like that, I couldn't imagine being in that position. Mm. And, you know, you just wish the best for her and hopefully that she maintained it. her mental health, you know, while she was in there. Uh, you know, but it's great to see that she's coming home. That's the most important thing. Uh, I know a lot of people was, you know, praying for and fighting for yes. over here. And it's great to see that they was able to get it done. Um, you know, it's just an unfortunate situation that right. she uh, got got caught up in, and uh, you know, but it's, it's 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 beautiful to see that she's coming back here to the states. Yeah, there were some channels obviously turned for her to be back, but I'm with you. I echo the sentiments that you just put out there. That it's it's a wonderful thing that she's free, and from what I understand, headed back to the U.S. So that's where she belongs. But you know, I, I, we know each other well. We were teammates. We've been friends for a long mm-hmm. time. And I don't think everybody, John, knows your story, uh, how mm-hmm. you got to where you were an all-star, two-guard in the NBA, um, just raised a lot of hell, basically, with you <laughs> with, after you found your way in the league. But if you would, just give our viewers an idea of what it took for you to mm-hmm. get to the point that you are now in your life, especially from a mm-hmm. basketball standpoint. Mm-hmm. Well, no, it was a long, <laughs> uh, hard road travel, uh, like so many of, uh, you know, players that come through this league. Uh, mine was a little different than a lot of guys uh, because I was an undrafted free agent. Uh-huh. And uh, so I had to make my bones. And, you know, coming from where I come from, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the struggles that uh, I had growing up as well as my family. And, you know, being in and out of college, a couple of colleges before I landed at Oklahoma State and uh, saw opportunity uh, once I got there that I was on a a bigger stage and I knew I needed to make the most of it. And I was able to do that in one year. Uh, Got looked at by uh, Coach uh, Larry Brown, who was at Kansas at the time. Mm -hmm. They were just coming off a national championship um, season that year with uh, Danny Manning. Yeah, And uh, he ended up taking a job at San Antonio Spurs, and that's where I got my first start. Uh, he I, didn't didn't even know that, I didn't even yeah. know that. I didn't even know that. He came he, when he first got there, and he, obviously he got a chance to see me up close. So obviously he was coaching in the Big 12, Big 8 at the time, and that's the Big 12. Um, and he liked what he saw in me. And uh, Coach uh, Bill Self, who's now at Kansas, uh-huh. was my assistant coach. And uh, uh, Coach Hamilton, who's at Florida State was my head coach. Oh, wow. Uh, so it's great to see those two guys having success that they're having right now in, in college basketball. But, you know, Larry Brown and, and Coach Self was good friends, and he told Coach Self that uh, if he was going to get a head coaching job, that he would take me in the, in the next year's draft because I actually had one year of eligibility left okay. at the NIAA Division Two, Division Three level. And so it just so happens he ended up you – know, the, 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 how the Lord works. Yes. So happened he he ended up at uh, 
uh, taking a job at San Antonio uh, that particular uh, summer. And he said, I can't draft you uh, because we already have uh, who we're going to draft. And that was uh, Bernie Maxwell. Okay. And uh, Mad Max. And he said, Mad Max. <laughs> Friend of the show. So, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and he brought, he brought me in. Uh, as an undrafted free agent, and me and Max was playing in the same back backcourt. Oh my God! Doing, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Were doing there the enough John, I... John, was there enough, <laughs> enough balls? I mean, uh, I, you no, know, both of you all need you the know, ball. <laughs> I broke in as a point guard. I was oh wow! A point guard. Yeah, when I came in, you should know this because uh, I got a little story about you. <laughs> okay. uh, but, <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> but. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and so I had a good, you know, rookie free agent camp. And, yeah. uh, and you know, I thought I was going to sign with Golden State. And, you know, that I, I so remember. Many, yeah, I had so many uh, offers that was, um, you know, asking for me. You know, Indiana, uh, Golden State, uh, the Bulls. I had a bunch of people coming at me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, my agent, who was Ron Grinker at the time, told me, um, that Golden State want to bring you in and they want to guarantee you $50,000. You know, I'm coming out of college, uh, married, and had a, had my son, J.J., at yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. And $50,000 was a lot of money to me at that time. <laughs> right, right. So I, I went back to Coach Brown. I said, Coach Brown, you know, Golden State is uh, – Offered me fifty thousand guaranteed, you know, and uh, no, I'm, I laughing I because, I'm laughing because I'm laughing, John, because that's like that's like uh, a grain. No, I know, right? To, to what guys are making now, you said fifty thousand oh, no dollars. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, and uh, I, I asked Coach Brown. I said, if y'all can match it, you know, I'd love to be here because you gave me the opportunity. So yeah. I felt some sense of loyalty to him for giving mm -hmm. me that opportunity. He said, you know, let me go and ask. Uh, as uh, management, and they said the only thing we can guarantee you is ten thousand. So you know what that is. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> that ten is oh, that ten no. don't even sound right, does no, it? It sounded sound. like a dollar. Like sounded like a buck, <laughs> exactly. probably. Pete. Exactly. So I started obviously with Golden State. So we were playing a preseason. Get to your story. So <laughs> we were playing a preseason, our first preseason game, and we was playing it against y'all. I think we was down in Dallas. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And, uh, you know, and I was a point guard, and, and Hart was out and driven the ball up court, and I spent on you. And you grabbed me around my waist, <laughs> stole the ball. Right. No foul, no foul. No foul. Went up for a layup. If I look at the referee, the referee looked at me like, I had that. I, said, oh, I had that oh, reputation, John. <laughs> they let me get away with murder out there. But you know what? You know, but you was known as a defensive player. Absolutely. You know, a, a defense, defensive player. You know, in this league, once you get labeled with that, you get a, you get liberties yes. out there on the court. Absolutely. And you had a lot of liberties, <laughs> and they taught me. Okay, so I know what I need to do. I need to become a defensive-minded player Absolutely. in this league. And that's what I did, and that's how I stuck in the league. Mm -hmm. Well, let me let me ask you this: we 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 played in New York '94 through '97, I think it was, yeah. and actually played for a championship in '94. Yeah. So we had some characters, man. You you got to admit that <laughs> we we had it, yeah it, we what, did yeah. If we were a movie, what 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 exactly? What kind of probably a horror movie? But I'm gonna get your thoughts <laughs> on it. But we had personalities like Charles Oakley, Patrick Ewing, yourself, me, Greg nice. Anthony, Anthony, the the late uh, Anthony Mason, Rolando Blackman was on that team, Herb Williams, Charles Smith, um, the yeah. Hubert Davis, the list goes yeah. on and Charlie, on. Charlie, Charlie Ward. Ward, Monty Williams, yeah. all those guys, yeah. no, no, no doubt about it. Think if we were a movie, what kind of movie would we have been? Because again. Pat Riley, Jeff Van Gundy were the coaches. We we had some characters and some crazy personalities. What kind of movie would you you say that that group was? Because everywhere I go, I was just in New York with you on last Saturday, yeah. and you know, Nick fans don't forget anything. They love their team, their basketball in New York. How would you describe that group? Animal House <laughs> just popped in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Animal House. <laughs> Animal House. Explain why you say Animal House, Pete. Oh, man. Uh, 
man. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, you remember the movie Animal House? Oh, of course. You had so many characters in that movie. Right. You know what I mean? And that's what we represented. You know what I mean? Yeah. We were the fun-loving bunch of guys that loved one another, yep. that went out there and competed hard every single night. Um, you know, and just had fun. You yes. know, whether it was on and off the court, you know, we did our thing. And, did and it I together. That's what made did us. It- that's yeah, the closest together, knitted, the closest knitted team that I've ever been around was that team in New York. Right. I mean, I, and I played with some some real tight teams, but we were all. If one went to a <laughs> a strip club, everybody went to the strip club, right? So mm-hmm. I mean, we 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 did our thing together, and I, I think yeah, yeah, that that's the thing that stands out. Yeah, we, you know, we we had a we had a a good time, man. We you know, it was just that. You know, we came to work every single day. Yes. Um, and we we put it in, you know, and it wasn't no slacking in practice. I, I tell people our practices was harder than the game. Yes. After the game, that that was like a relief, mm-hmm. you know, and then because you know how Rouse was. We had some. I'm going to get to Coach practices. Riley. I'm going to get to Riley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had some long practices, man. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, you kind of appreciate those uh, practices now because you you see it from a team aspect on mm-hmm. on execution that you're not seeing in today's game as much uh, like we was back then and uh, you appreciate them now but you going through it you didn't appreciate <laughs> you it hated it going through it no yeah question, yeah no question about it man I um I had Oak on the show and you and I know Oak very well right. Mm-hmm. Describe Charles Oakley. You better not say anything wrong because you know Oak will find you. <laughs> He's like that guy on the uh, on the equalizer. That's my, that's my dude. Man. That's you mine that. too. But describe Charles Oakley to to the viewers, man. What what Oak was about when it comes to handling his business as a player? Yeah, now Oak was all business, you know. Period. Uh, you know, you know his work ethic. You know, Oak can go hang out in the club all night. And <laughs> yeah, I do be know. The first one. In- <laughs> Be the first one, be the first one in the gym in the morning, right. lifting, getting the sweat in, and right. you know, and come get you a hundred and ten percent. You know, that was him. He was just a beast. You know, um, always had your back, no matter what. You know, that's what you appreciate mm-hmm. uh, about him. You know, he was obviously our enforcer on the on the team, and yes, people sir. knew that, and opponents knew that. You know, that I had the liberty to do whatever I wanted to do, and you had the liberty to do whatever you want to do out there on the so, court because you know you had, yes, had his beast behind you. He would, he you would pull your, he would pull, if you're, if you're beefing with a big guy, he would pull your little ass out the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, <laughs> let, and me let me handle <laughs> Let me handle the big dudes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, would you, you know, were, buddy? Go ahead. I'm sorry, John. I just said he just had a great work ethic. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, obviously he was limited from a, a standpoint that he wasn't, a guy that jumped at the gym, right. you know, but he was always amongst the leaders in rebound because he had an art to that. You know what I mean? Yes. And he knew it how how to get in there and position himself, uh, and he read the ball when it was coming. When you shot the ball, he knew where it was going to come off the rim. Yes. You know those guys. He was like for Dennis Rodman in that aspect. Yep. You know those great rebounders like him. They just had an art into how you rebound and then. Probably was one of our best, you know, show guy on the pick and roll, which they don't do that now. Oh, he, he was incredible. Out on that pick. He was incredible, incredible right? Yeah, he was incredible. There's no doubt about yeah. it. I mean, I, I love being in a pick and roll situation with him because I knew, John, all I had to do was to just keep coming over that screen and Oak was going to slow guys like, you know, Rod Strickland, some of the better point, yeah. Kevin Johnson, Tim Hardaway, and all of those guys, he, I know he was going to show long enough for yeah. me to get caught up with those speedsters and those quick guys. And, and my opinion, John, and tell me how you feel, I think Patrick Ewing was somewhat underrated as a player. Your thoughts on it? Oh, no question. No question. You know, obviously, you know, I got a chance to play with him for, um, you know, eight years, mm-hmm. you know, from 90 to 98. Mm-hmm. And you got a chance to play with him for three years. Yeah, two and a half, three and years. You, to, yeah, and you know, you know, the work that he put in every single mm-hmm. day uh, to come out there and play, whether he was injured, he would still take the court, you know, as many days that he probably shouldn't even 
been out there on the court, but he, he felt a commitment as a leader of, of, of the Knicks as well as a commitment to the fans and, and that organization to come out there and and give 110% every time he stepped out there on the court. Mm-hmm. Uh, had a heart of a line. You know, he could do pretty much everything out there on the court. He mm-hmm. could, you know, even develop a three-point shot. As you know, we used to shoot those during practices and stuff. Yep. And, um, you know, a hell of a low post player, great defender. You know, he gave us the liberty of getting up on our man and playing aggressive because, you know, the backup knew that there. you had him. Yeah. He was back there along with, you know, old mates and all those guys, yeah. you know, her whims even, you know. So, you know, you can't say enough about what he brought to the organization. And he went out there and led by example. Yeah. So that brings me to my next question because, you know, a lot of people – will 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 go at beast and said he wasn't a, a a leader if you would you know and nobody in particular just in general yeah i think people didn't really see and respect patrick as the kind of leader that he was so in your opinion what kind of leader was patrick ewing because there are guys that lead by example right some guys do all of the things that you just acknowledged that, that Patrick did. And then other guys just have a knack and an air about them that, that really breeds leadership. I don't think Beast was that kind of leader, but I certainly feel like he had a lot of leadership because if you watched him and followed him, you were going to have an opportunity to produce. So describe what kind of leader you think Patrick was. Well, like you said, he, he led by example. Yeah. In, in the way he worked. Every single day you come to practice, the way he worked every single day, getting shots up before practice, mm-hmm. getting shots up after practice. Uh, you know, when he had to be vocal, he would be vocal. Uh, but he was so focused on going out there and making sure that everybody was ready to play. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, he wasn't a guy that that you would say going, you know, talk all the time. But mm-hmm. when he needed to say something, you listen. You know what I mean? Right, like right. E.F. Hutton. Right, right. You know, so right. that's what that was. That's who Patrick was. You know, but you know, you you appreciate you know the the commitment that he put in every single day and the way he worked and you wanted to come out there and follow follow his lead in that in that uh, aspect. I I, I got to talk about the late Anthony the, the the late great Anthony Mason, one of my favorite guys, and you know you know uh, Mace better than. Most people know him. Describe him. Describe his personality. He's he got kicked off of the yeah. team a couple of times. I mean, Mace was Mace. Mace thought he was a point yeah. guard, a small forward, <laughs> a, a, a power forward, and a center. Describe yeah. Anthony Mason, man, in your in your thoughts <laughs> as a player and a person. Yeah, Mace was a great person. You know what I mean? He he had his beef with people, but far as you know, the heart that he had for people was incredible. Uh, you know, fun loving guy, as you know, um, you know, like you said, he felt that he could play every position out there on the court <laughs> and he basically did. Yes, he did. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got as a story for you when you finish. And yeah. handle, you know what I mean? He yeah. thought he was the best shooter out there on the court. The right. best passer, <laughs> and couldn't shoot a lick. Defender. He couldn't shoot a lick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, he, he was just special, man. Mace was a good good dude, man, yeah, a good soul. Him. And yes. uh, you know, I miss him, you know. Absolutely. And uh, you know, I can't say enough about, you know, his commitment to to New York City and right. what he brought to New York City. He embodied everything New York City was about, you know, toughness, the fight, uh, the heart, you know what I mean, yeah. the grind. Yes. You know, that was Mace. So listen, John, we we uh we played the Rockets in '94. And um everywhere, everywhere I go, that's all New Yorkers want to talk about. I mean, I, I can be in the airport, I can be on the golf course, and when people see you, they start talking about that team, that '94 team mm-hmm. that was number one in the Eastern Conference, faced the Houston Rockets mm-hmm. in the finals. Uh if if you remember the O.J. Simpson situation with with, uh, with O.J. in the right white Bronco and all of that kind of stuff. So that's what I think about when I think about that that particular opportunity to win a championship. What do you think about when you think back to that uh, that opportunity that we had in '94? Mm-hmm. It was it was a great run, you know. Um, 
you know, we, you know, put in a lot of effort over the three years until it took yeah. for us to get there until you came yeah. there right. and uh, helped lead us to, to that uh, finals. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, to be able to have that opportunity to play for a championship was just the greatest thing because you dream about those Damn opportunities. Right. Damn right. Um, it was a great, great series, uh, a hard-fought series. Um they stole game three. I think if we would have got game game three. I'm sorry I'm asking series. you this question because I, I, I'm about to get emotional sitting up here thinking about game three. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They stole they stole game three. I yeah. think if we would got game three, we would have probably closed it out in New York. But, you know, they, you know, Sam Cassell hit a big shot. Damn, and sure uh, did. they pushed it, and pushed it to uh, knowing that they were going back at least to Houston. But we was able to, you know, go up 3-2 and – Game six, uh, I got on fire in that fourth quarter. And yeah, I remember. Had an opportunity uh, to possibly, possibly uh, win it for us, which I, I felt good mm-hmm. uh, on that shot with Akeem. And probably no other player on that team would have got to that shot. But I Akeem, agree. Uh, being that athletic and the way he could move, you know, he had guard-like skills yeah. from an athletic standpoint. And uh, – he got his fingertips on it, and it pushed to a game seven. And game seven was like horrendous for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, but you know, Houston, you know, they they was a very solid team. Obviously, it went back to back. Yeah. Uh, the next year, and uh, but that shows that they was a solid team. But I thought, you know, that was our our, our championship, yeah. and uh, unfortunately, we didn't bring it home, and right. I didn't bring it. Didn't have a great, particularly great game. Obviously, going two for eighteen. Yeah, that was probably the hardest thing. It was two for nineteen. I, two for sorry, eighteen, man. Eighteen. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry to be the bear of bad news, but listen, you try, Pinky. You, you try to throw an extra shot. No, 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 that is a lie. I'm not. Listen, Pinky. I, I don't think people realize who you really are, or at that particular juncture in your career, I don't think people knew how tough-minded you were. And everywhere I go, man, people are like if Starks hadn't went two for 18, if Starks didn't, if he would have did this, if he would have did that. And the way I always looked at you, you were my guy. You know what I mean? We, we were tied together um, in 94 doing, doing the finals. Did that bother you after the series was over? I, I say John is probably on the golf course somewhere. That, that, that doesn't bother yeah. everybody. You know what I mean? Because you have good games, you have bad games. Hell, nobody is, is on all the time. So I, did that affect you moving forward in your career? Yeah, no, it it was hard. I had to deal with it during the summer. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, and and I had to go through that pain and and that suffering that that you go through in order to yeah. to understand, you know, why. You yeah. know what I mean? Why yeah. you go out and play that way? I had to deal with that from a mental standpoint, and I was like down. I, I really was, and 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 um, you know. I had family around me trying to, you know, you know, console me and, yeah. and what have you. But, you know, I had to deal with that, yeah, you know, from inside here. You know what I mean? And right, I, right. I was like, had to go and and look at and, you know, a lot of great players had bad game seven. You yeah. know, Magic Johnson. You know, you you can go through the list, uh, but they was able to bounce back and go on to play for another championship and win another championship. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I never got that opportunity to do that. Uh, But I had to, like, draw upon, you know, everything that I went through growing up and getting to this point in my life in order to to get through that. And I couldn't let that destroy me because I seen the tragic stories of, you know, athletes, whether it's in football, basketball, baseball, whatever, you know, let that one particular moment defined Absolutely. their life and Absolutely. never returned back to being who they are. I went on obviously to become six man of the year after that mm-hmm. and went on to have a successful career following that. But it took some time for me to get over that. I had to really put that in a box yes, and, uh, and keep it there. You know what I mean? I think about it, but I'm not going to let that define That's right. me and destroy me because I know that, a much stronger person than that. And plus I had a wife and children to That's take right. care of. And I can't let that one moment mm-hmm. destroy my life because it would destroy them. 
Absolutely. Well, the reason I even asked the question, uh, I was a rookie, 83, 84. And you, you remember it. I think everybody in the basketball oh, yeah. world, yeah. I, I dribbled off the clock thinking that we had a one-point lead, right? So I'll never – I remember it like it was yesterday, Pink. After the game, I'm, I mean, you, you, you know the feeling. You just described the feeling for you. Mm. After the game, I turn around from pouting and being so disappointed. And what, all that I turned around to were, was a, a bunch of damn cameras where the media was ready to crucify me. So I went through that same shit that you're talking about, man. And it is difficult, but I refuse, just like you're saying you refuse. I, I asked a question. I, I, they, before they could ask me anything, I asked the reporters, why, why are you all wanting to talk to me? Ha, ha, ha. You know, because I was trying to shift the shit back to them. You know what I mean? I was like, what happened? Did... did Something happened? Why is everybody in my locker room? And then they started laughing, and that sort of broke the ice for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm with you. I, I, you make mistakes in, 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 in sports, man. It, it's not a perfect mm – -hmm. sports is not perfect. And I think a lot yeah. of people get, misconstru get it misconstrued that it is, that how could you do this? He's a dummy. He's this. He's that. Mm -hmm. What was he thinking? All of those kind of things. And I think people forget the human part of professional sports. And mm -hmm. just like you deal with the great things that you do, like it or not, sometimes you have to deal with the 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 the, the screw ups as well, yeah. like like we experience in that situation. Man, I I got to get to um, to a particular practice that we had. Do you remember the day we were we were going through practice and we were bullshitting around, turning the ball over? What just wasn't yeah, there. Yeah. There and Coach Riley mm -hmm. turned the practice into a damn running practice. We must have ran. I, I don't want to bullshit. What, what, how long do you remember us being just running up and down the damn court with the balls it back was, up in the damn equipment? <laughs> 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 Incredible, man. Nah, it, it was a minute. <laughs> I, I mean, guys, stop. Minute, I yeah. think Herb, I think Roe, Rolando Blackman, I think they stopped. They stopped running. They said the hell with it. They're not going to walk. Do you remember <laughs> yeah. that? Do you exactly. remember that day? Yeah, that I remember that. I remember crazy that. day, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was crazy. Rousey had some days like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I got kicked out of practice a few times. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, yeah, that was, that, was, that was one crazy, crazy, crazy day. Yeah. You know what I mean? We were just running. Right. Just run, run, I run, wanted to stop. Run, I swear run. to you. And I knew I knew any minute he gonna come to his senses, get the yeah, balls back yeah. down on the floor. Yeah. It never yeah. happened. It blew me away. How would you I say Pat Riley, you say what? I know you guys were close. You know, Riles is one of those guys, but I'm gonna try to get him on, on Harp's court at some point in time. I know he's a busy guy down in Miami, but you knew him longer than I did. Well, maybe not, because I played against the Lakers a lot. But you really knew Coach Riley up close and personal. Describe the man and his uh his desire to be successful yeah he when he first came to new york you know everything changed for us as players everything changed for this organization mm -hmm. um he brought a first class mentality here um you know we all when we was you know i wasn't here before they they started riding uh well we was riding uh um, private planes uh private planes right. but when he came I see the difference between quality and non-quality <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> when he came. Everything stepped up a, a notch from yeah. the way where we traveled, from where we stayed at, you know, all the Ritz Carlton, you know, instead of the Holiday Inn and all that. <laughs> right. So, you so know, I know. everything, <laughs> yeah, everything stepped up, man. You know, our practice facility, you know, everything, the organization mentality, um, about, uh, uh, dancers, Nick City dancers uh, came. Trust, I you know, remember. <laughs> from, yeah, everything, everything changed. You know, he brought, you know, the excitement that he had in L.A., he brought to New York. You know what I mean? He knew that he had to change the whole mindset of the organization as well as of the fans. You know what I mean? Expectations, you know, went to another level. Right. And, um, you know, his preparation, ever seen a coach 
do what he did in order to get his team ready. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. Because normally coaches come in for an hour. I've been on teams where coaches come in for an hour, mm -hmm. you know, have practice, and you out the door. Yes. You know what I mean? If you want to stay around, you can shoot. No. You know what I mean? He made you think about the game of basketball. 24-7. 24-7. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. It's on your mind. You know, he's the first that I ever seen come down and really, he ran it like a business. Yes. He, he really did. He ran it like a business. You know, he would put numbers in front of you. You know what I mean? You oh, have, I remember. You, you, you been, remember? What was you doing? Yeah. <laughs> you remember my embarrassment no, just, just with that? Take, yeah. Uh, I, we put us against that damn wall over at SUNY Purchase, and he just go down the list. Like, Harp, you're not getting it done, brother. I, I, didn't, I didn't trade for this shit that you're giving me right now. You're shooting 20% from the three-point line, 35% from the field. Yeah, you have the audacity to, to be pouting when you're not in the game. Do something, and I'll put you on the damn floor. But, I mean, Rob, one of my favorite guys, you got any stories that you can share that uh, that blew you away when it comes to Coach Rowley? Oh, man. Yeah, you got you got a lot of them. Um, you know, Rob, well, this is like a funny story. Right. And, uh, <laughs> so, I think he was there. Yeah, you was there. Yeah. So, Rob, before the game, you know, he – he got his whole, you know, demeanor, his speech ready for us and stuff like that. <laughs> I'm laying, you know, I'm laying on the floor, you know, I'm stretching, you know, he's right. deep into, you know, you know, his his speech and getting us pumped up, getting us ready, you know, and I made this one move and it just came out of me like this big old loud fart. <laughs> he's in the middle, he stopped. You know, he yeah. had he had so many so many you know ways to get us ready. I, yeah, I yeah. remember the um, the the one story about the the scorpion and the frog, and you know he told the told us about the scorpion wanted to cross the river. And he wanted the frog to give him a ride, right? Right. And the frog, <laughs> the frog said, "The frog said, no, you gonna sting me." He said, he, and the scorpion said, "Why would I sting you? You know, we both would drown." Right. And so he said, you know, "The frog said, yeah, that makes sense." So he jumped on the frog back halfway across the across the uh, the uh, river. The scorpion stung him. The frog looked back like, "Why do you do that?" gonna die well, just my nature <laughs> to go out there and play like we play every single night yeah play like our nature you well, know listen, what I mean? it makes a lot makes a lot of sense now for sure do you remember yeah. when we were in the in the semifinals against the pacers right mm -hmm. game seven we had if we won it was three three if we won we went to the finals so rouse was again into one of those navy marine speeches remember yeah yeah and you could hear paper and, sh paper and shit rattling and just so much going on. And it was Oak over in his locker room, just antsy as hell, couldn't sit still. And Ralph finally got on. He said, oh, what the hell are you doing? What's going on? What, what, what the hell is you, what, what are you doing? Is what, what uh, Ralph said to him. And I, I don't know if you remember this or not, but mm -hmm. Oak stood up and said, Man, fuck that speech, man. Because if we're not ready to play now, we we gonna get our ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, say what the hell is you, what you mean, man? If we ain't fucking ready to play now, we're gonna get our butts whooped anyway. So the hell yeah. with that speech, man. Bring it in. We brought it in <laughs> on Coach Riley's one of those speeches, and we went out there and won the game. But yeah, ju just a very a very weird and bizarre. Man, we had a lot of lot of good times so, though. Pink, let me let me yeah. go off the court a little bit, man, with you because I know you're doing big things in business and everything else. But you're an ambassador for the Knicks, and what is that like? Do you enjoy interacting the way you do in New York as an ambassador? Yeah, no, I enjoy it. You know, it puts me amongst the fans. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a great role for me with the organization. Um, I'm a easygoing individual. Uh, of course, you know. I, I like being around people mm -hmm. and I, I like interacting with people. And, you know, New York fans are like the greatest fans ever. You yeah. know what I mean? They love their basketball. They love their, their uh, legends. 
Uh, like what the saying, once a Nick, always, always a Nick. Always a Nick, baby. You know, That's we, real. Yeah, we didn't have <laughs> we didn't have guys to play for us one year and come back. Right. <laughs> he was there for even if you like stepped in the door and right. stepped back out the door. You know, once you, <laughs> they you know, consider you a Nick. Nick. You, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And and fans appreciate that. You know, Absolutely. they appreciate you know the former players being around and and things of that nature. And it's great to see you know, that you are still, you know, um, at the top of their list as, as a player. You know, I feel grateful to be able to have played in New York for the time that I played in New York and had the success that uh, we had as a, as a team. And uh, fans appreciate that. You, you, you feel it when you come back here. And, of course. You know. Love it. They, they love you. You know what I mean? And that, that's New York, you know. And, uh you know, so I've I've been fortunate enough to be at, with this organization since 2004. I didn't know if I was going going to be here that long, and uh, and I was able to uh, you know have a great career, you know, and stay in the game of, of basketball and be around the game of basketball. Pink, listen, I, I, the, I the dunk. The dunk, the yeah. dunk. That I mean, that's everywhere you go. You go to the train station in New York. You see John Starks dunking over Horace Grant and are those guys looking up at you flying. What did that do for your career? What did that do for you? Man, <laughs> you know, you know, Harp, you know, when you 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 do things in the game, you don't think about that. You, right. All you're doing is trying to trying to win. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's what and you do. It's what you do. And um, that play right there put me on the map. Man, I didn't even know it. You know, I – I didn't dunk on a lot of guys, right. you know, in my career. <laughs> I can't you know, say that. And, I can't and, say that. <laughs> and I, I tell people, you know, that's probably my most famous dunk, but the one that felt the best when I dunked on Mark West, who's a seven-footer. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's and my guy. We got drafted here together, Mark West and I. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, when he see me and I see him, I just look at him like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that felt the best. But that particular play, obviously, it was in the playoffs, and it was against uh, the Chicago Bulls and uh, Horace Grant, and, and, and Jordan got in the picture and made it look good. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, tell, I tell people, if that happened in the United Center, it's just another play because it was in the garden and because who – who it was against yeah. is what made that so special. And uh, you get moments like that in sports, yeah. you know what I mean, where, you know, you catch you catch somebody in an iconic moment. And I was able to, you know, catch, you know, Horace Grant as well as Michael in the picture. And uh, people still to this day. I didn't realize how that, until I came back and started working with the organization. And I can honestly say every single day, no matter where I'm at, somebody mm -hmm. asked me about that play. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you just don't think about it as as uh, as a player, you know, during your playing days. But, you know, when it was all said and done, like I said, it, it was an iconic moment and yeah. it would always be known as a dunk. Absolutely, man. Listen, what – you you around the team? You around players? What what kind of in, uh, what 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 do you say to young people? How do you try to? How do I put this? How, how do you try to help guys prepare themselves for after basketball? I, I think that's extremely mm -hmm. important. Everybody's not fortunate enough to get a job in the organization, yeah, and things like that. What do you think the key? Mm -hmm. And surely the league has programs where they do, yeah they do implement for you to move forward after your career. But what do you think the key is for setting yourself up for life after basketball? Mm -hmm. Other than saving your you money. Should, yeah, yeah, you definitely have to save your money. But I, I think, you know, preparing yourself for on, on life when that ball <laughs> stops bouncing. Mm -hmm. and I think that's the, you have to have that mindset early on. And, and guys, either they get it towards the end of their career when they feel – within themselves that their game is deteriorating. Yes. And so they know they, they the clock is ticking. Then they start thinking about it. But I think if you could think about it earlier and start setting yourself up, you know, for life after the game of basketball, whether you want to be in, uh, stay in the game of basketball well, coaching, you know, whether you want to be what I do, what I do, stay in the organization, 
you know, starting, you know, finding out what it takes in order for you to do those things mm -hmm. is, is the most important thing. You know, I never thought, you know, Patrick would go into coaching. I you was know, I just never going thought, there. <laughs> I was going to go thought, there. I never thought Doc Rivers would go into coaching, but oh. Doc used to say Doc used to save all the playbooks yeah. from every team that he went to. I, I so think, he was I think he Doc was really knew. Yeah, I think he really knew he wanted to be a coach. I really do. Because I don't think you have the kind of success he's had and not think about doing that. I think he prepared himself for coaching. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? He started preparing himself early on. And you have you have to think about those things, you know what I mean? And uh, most guys don't think about it until the ball stops bouncing. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, real life hits you in the face. <laughs> and, like, what you going to do now? Right. You know what I mean? You never wanted and to like coach, John? I'm sorry to cut you off. You, you, uh, you never had any ambitions of coaching? I thought about it hard. And when I, I, I coached in the USBL for two, two years. Uh-huh. All the players that was coming through, I like the hell with this. <laughs> I don't want to do. It. I saw different. a bunch of, I saw a bunch of me. I saw a bunch of me. <laughs> nah, no, 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 no. Man, I was so stressed out, man, for two right. years. I was like, oh no, I can't go do this. That then I watched, funny. you know, you know, God rest his soul, Jerry Sloan. You know, yeah. I watched him, I and mean, he had like ulcers throughout his body. Right, you know right, what I mean? right. And right. I'm like. And I started to like feel that stress coming on. Oh, it's a but, lot. You know, as as players, as players, once you lose a game and once you eat and lay down that pillow, yeah, the game is over with for you. You on to the next thing. That's right. As, co as coaches, oh no, you it, 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 you take you it to bed you, all night. You take it home. You take it to your family. You take it every doggone where when when you lose. It's like you like you the end of the world. You, yeah. Yeah, you trying to figure out. Uh, we had a game plan. You know what I mean? Right. That's that's your mentality as a coach. You know, what happened? You know, what can I do better? Mm -hmm. You know? And as a player, you know, we just like, we on to the next. Yeah, of course. Next game, you know? Of course. Who had the uh, the biggest impact? And I'll get you out of, out yeah. of here on this one. Uh, who, who, who was the most influential person in your life and in your career? Well, the most influential influential person in my life probably was my mom and my grandmother. Why is you that? Know, I watched them struggle, man. I watched them try to feed, you know, seven kids uh, with nothing, you know, and the work, the hard work that they had to put in in order to feed and clothe us and still keep us focused on, you know, trying to make something of ourselves. I watched that struggle. And, you know, I can't say enough about my mother and her fight. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, they, they were just those women in my life that really gave us backbone. And you, that fight that you saw on the court comes from those mm. two women. Yes. You know what I mean? And Because I watched them fight. Uh, probably in basketball, it would have to be Coach Riley. Mm -hmm. Coach Riley, you know, showed me how to be a professional. Mm-hmm to be a professional, taught me how to work, taught me how to do pretty much everything in the game of basketball at this level, you know what I mean? So I would say him for uh, the basketball side of it. Beautiful, man. I, I'm gonna, I, I can't thank you enough. You know, we, 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 we bull crap around a lot with each other, but yeah. you're one of my favorite people, Pinky, and I, I don't think people, I think that's, that gets misconstrued when people don't really know you. But I know yeah. you. We've shared a lot of games, a lot of times together. And mm -hmm. I have to say this, man, that 94, 93, 94 team, they were real ones. Everybody that was on their yeah. team, they, they, they were real ones. I mean, from, you know, uh, Eric Anderson, uh, yeah. Hubert Davis. I mean, Hubert, I thought Hubert might be a coach, and he's coaching yeah. Carolina, had a chance to win a championship. Mm -hmm. Or did they win it last year? They did. I I'm getting old, Pink. But anyway, that whole group, man, Charles Smith, yeah. just all yeah. of the guys, Greg Anthony, all the guys that was on that team, I have a special love for. And when I mm -hmm. see them, I'm always excited about it. 
just like I am. To, here, uh, yeah, just like I am to have this uh, this 40 minutes with you. So thank you, man, for your time. You're welcome, bro. And I hope I don't yeah. jinx you. You you think you're going to go low today? Or what, how the hell do you play golf? <laughs> I hope so. How do you, how do you play golf? out here is like 50 degrees right now. In New York City this time of the year, man. <laughs> got to get your crib in Dallas. I got car cover, I got my heater, <laughs> I got my cigar, so I'm All ready right, to go. Baby. Well, good luck, man. I love you. I'll talk to you soon, John. All right, bro. Okay. Take care, huh? You too. Bye-bye. <laughs>